Yo, what's up guys? This is Out of the Box and welcome to MTV Cribs. Just kidding, it's my studio tour. Come on in, let me show you around. First things first, I want you guys to take a look at my gaming setup. This is where I play video games, but also where I do all my editing, all my Photoshop work, and all my emails. So as you guys can see, I'm running a dual PC setup. And if we take a look at the one on the top first, this is actually my streaming PC, which is responsible for uploading all of the live streams. Taking a look on the inside, I'm running an Intel i9-11900K CPU, a 30 70 Ti graphics card, 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and a two terabyte Samsung SSD drive. And then taking a look at the PC on the bottom. Now this PC is not as flashy as my streaming PC, but it is still a beast. It's running a 3090 graphics card. I have an Intel i9 12900K CPU. I have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and I have a two terabyte SSD drive in there as well. Now this dual PC setup is more than everything I need for filming, editing, streaming, and doing office work, and of course, playing video games. Now sitting on top of my PC is something people ask all the time. This is a digital subscriber counter made by a company called Lametric. Basically, you just link it to your YouTube channel through an app, and then it will keep an updated count in real time. The only bummer about it is it only updates to the nearest thousandth. As you can see, it's 327,000. I would love to see the exact up-to-date number, but either way, still a very cool product. For my monitors, I have them triple stacked in a horizontal orientation. I actually use this rail mounting system so I can get them all perfect the way I want. This way I can get two horizontal and one vertical. One in the middle and the vertical as well are both made by Asus. They're tough gaming 27 inch monitors. They have 240 hertz, so they're perfect for gaming. And then the one on the right hand side is actually an LG OLED monitor that does 1440p gaming at 240 hertz. For keyboard, starting out with this red one, this is actually a custom build that I did not too long ago. It's made with a metal Echo Mod 006 case which is super heavy duty. The typing noises are incredibly satisfying. And overall, this is a build that's going to last me for a while. And then above that, I have my streaming PC keyboard and I'm running with the SteelSeries Apex Pro TKL keyboard, which features an OLED smart display and hyper magnetic switches. I like the fact that there's even a hidden keycap remover built into the back of the keyboard. And beside that, you'll see I have my Logitech MX Master 3S mouse that I use for office work and editing. The main feature here for me is the ergonomics because I don't want to be getting carpal tunnel, but the big Big emphasis is on functionality with this mouse as well. It has a lot of different buttons and dials that are customizable. And then for my second mouse, I use a Logitech Pro Super Light Gaming Mouse, which is ultra lightweight, glides extremely smooth over the surface, and has very clicky and responsive buttons. This has to be one of the best combinations I've tried in years. Moving right along, you guys will see I use a Shure SM7B microphone, which is also attached to a low profile Elgato mount. For my ears, this is the best microphone on the market, and I absolutely love it. The microphone and all the PC audio is routed into my audio interface, which is the Rodecaster Pro 2. It features six audio channels with physical sliders, soundboard buttons, and of course, input audio from four different microphones simultaneously and separately, which means it can be used to create YouTube videos or podcasts with ease. And of course, thanks to my friend Tom Buck for making the recommendation that I put it up on a monitor arm because now I can actually swivel this thing side to side, up or down. And because this Rodecaster is actually suspended above the desk and all the cables are routed properly, it really makes my setup feel nice and clean. Now, let me show you guys my headphones. These are the Sennheiser HD 650s. They have an open back design and extremely premium and cushy ear pads. And because they have sound pass through, they are very comfortable for me to wear for long periods of time. Moving right along to some of my streaming setup, as you can see, I use a pair of Elgato key lights, which can be app or software controlled, along with a trio of different cameras. Now, my main streaming camera is a Sony a7 II. Then, for my top down shots, I use a Sony a6300. And for my main camera, I use the Sony a7 III. In addition to my Elgato key lights, I use three Godex SL60. W lights to light up the space wall film. As you can see, the back wall has acoustic sound foam panels I picked up off Amazon. These are like two inches thick, nothing special there. And then the actual desk that everything sits on is a 72 inch Husky workbench. This is made for tools and garage, so it's super heavy duty. It is a thick wooden top and it allows me to mount any pieces of hardware or cabling underneath. For example, I took the drill out and I mounted my surge protector and cable tray under there. It also features sturdy metal legs and the whole thing is on wheels so I can roll it away from the wall if need be. And of course, you guys know we can't forget about my gaming chair. What I sit on is the Razer Enki Pro. I'm loving this chair so far. It's super high end and premium. It has Alcantara built into the seat and back, which makes it really nice. The armrests are adjustable so you can get really comfortable with it. And of course the magnetic headrest pillow is absolutely so soft and nice to lay my head on. And on the bottom, I removed the stock wheels that it came with and I put these rollerblade wheels on there and now it glides across the wood floors with ease. So now that you've seen my main desk setup, let's look to the 
left here, you're gonna notice this custom building I had made. There's a nice slat wall behind, just for a nice aesthetic. But first and foremost, we have a 55 inch LG TV. Next up, you're gonna notice this building I had underneath. And this is to house some of my favorite consoles that I play or don't play. You can see a lot of older Nintendo and PlayStation consoles here. Like this one, this is my favorite console right now. It's a PS2, but it's special because look, it's factory sealed, never been open since the day it was sold. It's a really special console to me. And then of course we have the fat PS3 and then also the NES, SNES and my Game Boy Color from my childhood. I love this side right here because check out this gold Nintendo 64. Now this isn't just any gold Nintendo 64. It's not the Toys R Us version. Nope, check out the tag. This is the actual Japanese version. So it's really rare. I actually had it modded so that it can play not only Japanese titles, but also the US titles as well. Then we are gonna have our GameCube right here. And if we open up our GameCube, you're gonna notice I had it modded as well. It doesn't take discs, but rather an SD card. And that actually houses hundreds of my favorite games. We have our DK Oldies Nintendo Wii. And then of course my Switch OLED. Here's a PS4 Slim I picked up at a swap meet. And then my LeBron James PS5 and the PS5 portal sitting on top, obviously. Give you a better look at the cover there. You're gonna notice that we also have some handhelds here. This is the Steam Deck. Check out that D brand case. Such a nice case right there. Followed by the Nintendo 3DS. I love that console as well. And then back there, this is one of my childhood consoles again. This is a Sega Genesis 3. I played so much Sonic the Hedgehog on there. It's insane. And then followed by my ROG Ally. This is another portable handheld PC. And then down below, these are some dead stock controllers. Never opened this PlayStation 1 DualShock original controller in original packaging. And you can see back in the day, it cost $29.99. Insane to see that inflation, how it's gone up and now controllers are $70. Then we have the 500 millionth edition PS4 controller. That is so cool. I really want to get the console version of this one day. Again, these are all factory sealed. And then we have another dead stock PS4 controller never opened. And then the DualSense Hogwarts Legacy controller. Again, factory sealed, never opened that either. Now, after I put these back, I'll show you guys these bins over here that I have. You guys know that on most of my controllers, I always use Control Freaks. And we have our Control Freaks bins. We have our RGB strips. We have our precision rings. And then of course, we have a lifetime supply of Control Freaks. These are some of my favorites, but uh, I actually have even more in a drawer somewhere. It's absolutely insane. Love those guys over there. Now, moving up top, this is my cat Bowser. He's the one who always gets into trouble when I'm trying to film anything. Absolutely love this little guy. He's really cool. He hangs out in this little hammock that I bought off Amazon. I just screwed it into the studs on my wall. It's the perfect cat accessory for the office. And then you guys will notice I also have this Audio Technica shotgun mic. This is how I get my ASMR videos if need be, if I can't use my shirt. And then of course you guys know how big of a Sonos fan I am. I always got to have a Sonos speaker so I can be bumping some music. Right here is my PS5 racing wheel in case I want to play some Forza or Gran Turismo. And then of course we have our Halo Infinite Xbox Series X. That thing is so cool. This right here is a Rhino slider. This is if I want to get some really stable B-roll shots. This thing is really high end and nice and it can really produce some nice results that you couldn't do by hand. And then of course, when I'm on the go, I like to use my MacBook to edit. This is a little statue I got from Halo World Championships. And then over here, I have a bunch of dead stock Nintendo Switches highlighted by the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom switch, this Pokemon OLED switch, which I absolutely love. Japanese exclusive Pokemon light switch. I absolutely love that thing. And then I have two dead stock Zelda Tears of the Kingdom games. This might be the greatest game of all time. So I got to keep these collector's edition bundles dead stock. Not going to even open those. I think these are going to be really cool to own in like 20 years. And then moving on up, I have a bunch more of my favorite things. Starting out with this custom resin Mountain Dew headset. It's a HyperX headset and Mountain Dew went ahead and added these resin hands on the sides. I absolutely love that thing. Dr. Disrespect gave me these mouse pads and check this one out. This one's actually autographed by him when I went to see him in Las Vegas. And then check this out. This is from Dr. Disrespect's game Dead Drop. I have a limited edition out of 500 bobblehead. This one's number 383. And then of course my MetaQuest 3 in case I'm feeling like getting into the virtual reality world. And one of my favorite accessories of all time, the Wonka Xbox controller bundle. Up top I have some venue lighting and a sound cloud that I made custom. Above the door I have a Guitar Hero guitar, one of my favorite games of all time. Up next, let me show you one of my favorite parts of the whole office, the infamous controller wall. Check out the pegboard. And then above that, I have some of my favorite limited edition consoles. This is the Spider-Man PS5, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Switch, and then the 20th anniversary PS4. One of my greatest accomplishments was earning this silver play button for passing 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Shout out everyone who has subscribed to the channel. And then above that, 
I have my Smurl TikTok counter. This just keeps up to date with all the new followers on TikTok and it's really cool. Down below, you can see I have my little turntable. It's electronic and that's how I get a lot of my nice little product shots. And then of course, shout out Mountain Dew for this Mountain Dew Raid fridge that they sent me. You'll see this in the back of all my live streams and videos. This thing is so cool and everybody always comments when they see it. Down below, I have a Husky workbench toolbox. This is just where I keep a lot of the tools that I use day to day to try to keep everything as organized as possible. And then over on the other side, I have my out of the box LED sign, a deconstructed Game Boy. This is a real Game Boy that used to be operational. And then four controllers that I either use or are special, like these two Xbox controllers over here. This is the Spider-Man uh, PS5 controller that went with the console. And then my daily controller, the Scuff Envision Pro. I use this one every single day when I'm playing video games. It is so nice. Andrew, don't you have to film your outro? Oh yeah, come here. All right, so a couple of things. Um, the biggest question I get all the time, I might as well answer this because I know you guys are gonna comment it, is how much money did this whole setup cost me? Roughly estimating, it cost me around $20,000 to create this entire setup. But one thing I want you guys to keep in mind if you're brand new or you're looking for inspiration for your studio is that this took me almost six years to build out. And um, most of the stuff that I have purchased, it has been expensive, but it's been a good investment because I have been using some of the same gear, like my cameras and my microphones and my lights and things like that since the very beginning and they've just lasted over time and they're gonna last for a lot longer than that as well so just keep that in mind you don't have to buy everything all at once but anyway guys go ahead and check out some other videos on my channel and if you're new make sure you hit the subscribe button and until next time i'll see you on the next video peace